In a previous video, we have introduced the Z-transform and looked at how to use it. When using the Z-transform, we usually refer to Z-transform tables of common signals as well as Z-transform properties. In this video, we prove some of the entries in the Z-transform tables as well as some of the Z-transform properties. On this page, we prove the Z-transform of three common discrete time signals, the impulse, the unit step, and the unit ramp. For the proof of the Z-transform of the impulse, we first write down the definition of the impulse and then directly apply the definition of the Z-transform to it. The unshifted impulse is defined as 1 when k is equal to 0 and 0 everywhere else. According to the Z-transform definition, the Z-transform of an impulse is given by this infinite sum, which can be written as in this line. The first term is 1 times 1, which is 1, and the rest of the terms are all 0, since the rest of the values of the impulse are all 0. The Z-transform of an impulse is therefore equal to 1. For the proof of the Z-transform of the unit step, we follow the same process. We write down the unit step definition and then directly apply the Z-transform definition. The unshifted unit step is defined as 1 for non-negative k values and 0 everywhere else. The Z-transform of the unit step is given by this infinite sum, which can be ex expanded as follows. This can be written as the series 1 plus 1 over z plus 1 over z squared etc which we recognize as a geometric series. We now apply this formula for the geometric series where x is equal to 1 over z which gives us this expression. When we multiply the numerator and denominator with z we get the Z-transform of the unit step as Z divided by Z minus 1. The geometric series only converges in the regions where the magnitude of Z is greater than 1. For the proof of the Z-transform of the unit ramp, we assume that the Z-transform of the unit step is already proven. We, we define the unit ramp signal, then we de derive an intermediate result which we combine with the Z-transform of a unit ramp to get to the desired result. We define the unit ramp as k times t times the unit step, where t is the sampling period. A plot of the unit ramp is shown here. For the intermediate result, we take the derivative of the Z-transform of a signal with respect to Z. We use the definition of the Z-transform here, move the derivative into the sum here, and we apply the derivative here. We now multiply with minus Tz, and we get that minus Tz times the derivative of x with respect to z is equal to this sum. When we look at the sum, we see that this is equal to the de definition of the Z-transform if the signal being transformed is kT times x of k, which is equivalently written here. We now apply this intermediate result to the unit ramp. If we choose the signal x to be the unit step, then kT times mu of k is a unit ramp, and we can write its Z-transform as minus Tz times the derivative of the Z-transform of the unit step. We now use the Z-transform tables to read off the Z-transform of a unit step. We calculate the derivative here. We gather the terms. And after some manipulation, we arrive at this result, which is the Z-transform of a unit ramp. Since we use the Z-transform of a unit step in the derivation, the region of convergence for this result is the same as that of a unit step. On this page, we look at the proofs for two of the Z-transform properties, 
the advance and the cumulative summation properties. We will prove the other four properties at a later stage. The advanced property calculates how the Z-transform of a signal changes if the signal is advanced or shifted forward in time. We will prove the case where the signal is advanced by one time step. It should be clear how to extend it to the general case. The idea of the proof is to apply the Z-transform definition to the time-shifted signal and then to manipulate things until we can isolate the Z-transform of the unshifted signal. We start the proof by applying the Z-transform definition to the time-shifted signal. We then multiply and divide by Z, take Z out of the sum and combine Z to the power minus 1 with Z to the power minus K. The result is almost the Z-transform of signal Y but the summation starts at time index 1 instead of time index 0. We therefore add and subtract the term at time index 0 and we also change the definition of the summation variable to be m equal to k plus 1. When we combine y of 0 with the sum, we see that the sum is exactly the definition of the z-transform of signal y. This allows us to write the result as z times the z-transform of signal y minus z times y at k equal to 0. By shifting a signal forward one time step at a time and applying this result at each time step, we can easily get to the general advance property. Let's now look at the cumulative summation property of the Z-transform. It says that if a signal X is defined as the cumulative sum of another signal Y, then the Z-transform of X is equal to the Z-transform of Y times Z divided by Z minus 1. The meaning of the cumulative sum is this. For each value of the time index k, the value of signal x is the sum of all the values of signal y from time index 0 up to and including time index k. This means that x of 0 is equal to y of 0, x of 1 is equal to y of 0 plus y of 1, x of 2 is equal to y of 0 plus y of 1 plus y of 2, etc. It is useful to think of signal x as the discrete integration of signal y. Let's now move on to the proof of this property. The idea of this proof is that we apply the Z-transform definition and then manipulate things until we can recognize the Z-transform of signal y. When we apply the Z-transform definition to the cumulative sum of y, we get this double sum. The first three terms, as well as the kth term of this sum, is written out here. We now gather the terms containing y of 0, y of 1, y of k, etc. And we see that the second factor in each of the terms are infinite series that look similar. To make these series the same, we take out the first term in each of these series as a factor which produces this line. Since the infinite series is now a common factor, we can combine the terms as shown here. We now recognize the first factor as the definition of the Z-transform of signal Y and the second factor as a geometric series. We can therefore write down the result as the Z-transform of signal Y times Z divided by Z minus 1, where the geometric series converges for magnitudes of Z greater than 1.